If you're wondering what five allocated bourbons are not worth the hunt, stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Brad's Bourbon Reviews. I'm Brad and today we're going to talk about five allocated bourbons that are not quite worth the hubbub and the hunt. Now these are not like all super highly allocated things, but they are things that are considered allocated. There's no King of Kentucky, nothing crazy like that on this list. But these are just a few bourbons that I think are just not worth the hunt that are hard to come by, at least for me. Can't speak for everybody, I can't speak for the entire country, but for me here in Central Florida in Orlando, these are hard to come by. So let's go ahead and go with our first one here. And this falls into the category of this is a great bourbon, it is just not worth how difficult it is to come by. However, it is starting to become a little more available here in Orlando, but I still stand by that this $30 bottle should not be this difficult. It should not be $200 in some stores here in Central Florida, and I'm talking about Eagle Rare. I love it. I adore it, actually. But it is just not worth the hassle it takes to get this bottle, especially at a decent price. It's aged 10 years. It's a Buffalo Trace product. It's reasonably inexpensive. Uh, at retail, well, not reasonably, it's very inexpensive at retail. It's only 30 bucks for a 10 year bourbon. It's crazy. Um, and it's damn good. It is just for a lot of people I see all the time, people always say that this one is super hard for them to come by for whatever reason. And it's good, but it is just not worth that extra stress and that hassle. Moving on to the next one here. Uh, this one is kind of in the same vein. I like it, I don't love it. Um, if I can, if I find this at retail, you know, wherever I'm at, I will always grab one because I think it's good, and especially for people who are just getting into bourbon or you know know a little bit about bourbon, think it's cool to have Blanton's Single Barrel. Um, another Buffalo Trace product that is, for whatever reason, just super difficult to find. I remember seeing this on shelves, <laughs> and uh, I like it. I don't love it. I think for 60 bucks, which is what it's supposed to be, 60, 65 bucks, it's fine. Um, the, obviously, a lot of the charm is the bottle itself and the horse collector top. And, uh, you know, if you pay over 120 for this, I, I, I just don't know what to say to you because that just seems crazy to me. However, if it's worth it to you, by all means, to me, it's just not worth that level of hunting. Moving on to the next one here, a bottle that looks so damn cool on the shelf it looks cool everywhere it is a good bottle but for the secondary prices i'm seeing and for how difficult this bottle is to get uh you know people paying five six seven eight nine hundred a thousand dollars for this bottle i just i would be upset if i paid that much money for that and it was this again this is by no means a bad bourbon it is just not worth the crazy hunt for it uh, and that is weller cypb this was my first ever vault purchase from the, or only so far, vault purchase from the ABC Vault. And I am very, very, very happy that I have this. However, it is a $40 bottle of bourbon. You know, it is, it's good. It's not exceptional. It's, it's fine. Um, I was wanting a little bit more out of it, but I do think this is good. And if I ever found another one for 40 bucks, I definitely would buy one. But it's just one of those things where it's just like, it just isn't worth the stress of looking for it. Especially when you have so many other great, and I mean great Weller products. Foolproof, 107, it's just not worth the hassle and the difficulty of getting this bottle. Second to last one here, a bottle that um, I was relatively excited to get my hands on. I still have, I don't think I've seen this one since I bought this one. I may have seen it one other time. Um, I definitely haven't seen it at retail again. And it is the Henry McKenna 10 year. Mine is just fine. There's a weird mint julep note that I actually like on the nose, but it, it comes off as pine saw the more it's sitting open um, and like piney. So it's it's not my favorite bottle. Um, I don't get why this is so difficult to find. Again, it's okay, but it is just really difficult to find. I know some people can just walk into any liquor store and find these, but for here, again, for myself, this is a difficult one to come across, but it's okay. I, I don't know if I, I don't know. 
it's just difficult to find and not worth it to me. And last but not least is a bottle I don't even own, but I'm gonna put it right here, and that is the Pappy Lot B. Uh, I tried this on Father's Day, and I cannot tell you how disappointed I was that that thing wasn't as good as the 10 year. The 10 year for me is the best of the Pappies so far. I would buy one if I found one at retail. Of course, it's a it's a Pappy product. I actually found a Pappy cigar today. I'm excited to try that. Uh, so it's the only time I've ever seen Pappy out in the wild for retail. <laughs> uh, I would buy one, but honestly, I would probably just trade it for a 10 year, to be perfectly honest with you, because I like the 10 year way better. And I buy bourbon to drink it. I don't buy it to sit on a shelf and to look cool. If I'm not drinking it, there's no point in me owning it. So that is my top five bourbons that are not worth the allocation stress. Uh, so remember, just my opinion. If you love any of those bottles, God bless you. Uh, I totally get the collector mentality, trust me. So I understand if, these, if something you want is on this list and you're like, ah, oh, I really wanted to get it, still get it. But just know from my personal taste, it is not worth the hunt for those bottles. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on the next one. Until then, cheers.